son and I, Alex, are the inspiration behind the YouTube channel, The Snowflake Mum. So I thought it would be a good idea just to introduce ourselves and to explain a little bit more around the background as to what brought these videos about. I'm a first time mum and had an absolutely amazing journey in order to become a mum, but more about that in a later video that I will share. The time that I was on maternity leave, I managed to spend a lot of time doing exciting activities with Alex. And I will also link some links below on all the different things that we did so that you can follow up and do some of those activities, perhaps with your own little one. Once I had to go back to work after my maternity leave was finished, I wanted to make sure that Alex still continued to have the stimulation that he had when we were together during the day. And whilst my nanny went on a nanny introductory course on baby stimulation and she has done some training courses, a half a day workshop was really not enough to sustain the type of activities that would be required for this period of time. Alex is currently eight months old, but if you think about all the various things that is happening during the time period from birth to the first year, you would agree that a half day workshop, whilst comprehensive and having really good content, really scratches the surface of the developmental activities that would be required in order to stimulate those little brains, which are just soaking up like sponges and learning new things almost on a daily basis. So the aim of these videos were to then provide three different activities for my nanny so that she can look at these, consume the videos. We go through this together, usually on a Monday morning where I explain the different activities to her. And then what she does is she can then apply those different activities in Alex's day so that during the week they um, do the full list of activities. They repeat activities from the previous week and that way she's actually earning, learning more skills as well so that that actually adds up to her repertoire of early child development and I also know that Alex is enjoying the time by being exposed to new things. So what inspires me in terms of getting all of these activities? I'm just a mum. I'm not an occupational therapist. I am not a specialist in any way except for the fact that I've got a little boy. And so what I do is I do a lot of research and I read quite a lot on various different things that are developmentally appropriate, uh, stimulation activities, uh, milestones, etc. And the main sources that I consult for this is, are the following. Um, and I'll link all of these below as well. The list that I'm going through right now is by no means comprehensive. And what I will do is as I'm finding new sources, I will continue to post these links to this thread so that this will become a continued updated list of the various things uh, and places that I get information. So first off, I'm an avid uh, believer in the Wonder Weeks. Uh, we subscribe to that quite a bit. I have found evidence in Alex itself that these things are pretty accurate. Um, and so if you do, are not aware of the Wonder Weeks, have a look at the link below and also, just keep an eye out on the channel because I am planning on doing a specific video on the Wonder Weeks and what we have found works and what the areas are that does not work um, as well for us. Uh, the second source that I trust quite a bit um, was based on courses that we did through occupational therapists which were local. So that was um, the first off the Baby Builders course uh, and I will let just leave a link below um, in terms of booking information for this. And then also Moms and Babes, uh, which was another program uh, which we, we attended as well. I think the if there is a silver lining to the COVID situation and being through lockdown, it is that a lot of these courses and um, access to these experts are now available online so if for whatever reason you are either not living in one of the main centers where you have access to occupational therapists or specialists um, a lot of this content is now available to you via your internet connection uh, which is really cool or if for whatever reason you cannot travel from the house or out of the house then these are available to you as well some other sources um, that I um, love using as well is based on Montessori principles 
Um, so I follow the Hapa family um, and I just love their blogs. For some reason, it feels a bit like a rabbit hole because you start watching one and then, you know, kind of like just cannot stop yourself from watching the rest. I'm also an avid follower of Kids OT Help and I just love Nicole's way of describing certain activities and um, she's also uses her son to demonstrate some of these different things and with her background as an occupational therapist um, I know that a lot of the information that she is sharing is based on uh, the correct factual information as well. I often also get inspiration from just observing Alex. Um, he does certain things which I find to be outside of the norm or different to what I have expected. Um, and often I will then Google to see, well, is this something that, you know, is just Alex or is this something that might be common amongst children of a certain age group? And often I find that the things that I'm observing are things that are common within this time period. Um, and this is where you know, the Wonder Weeks helps quite a bit because they do describe a lot of the behaviors that you can expect to see. Um, but there are some things that are not as comprehensively described and therefore Google is your friend in this case and you can start getting an idea as to what is going on. So an example for that is that recently he started scratching. Uh, so when we're sitting on a chair um, of any texture, I can just hear his little nails and you think, well, this is quite interesting, you know, it's like as if he's turned into a cat. And quite funnily, um, I noticed in one of the Hapa family videos that their little girl, Mia, was doing exactly the same thing when she was around about that same age. So when I Googled it, um, I found some credible sources, and I want to emphasize the word credible and more about that later, um, that indicated that this is also how they develop their fine motor skills so that I knew that I needed to start adding additional fine motor skill activities into the repertoire that we are building up in these videos for Alex to make use of um, and really practice those grips. So the main thing for me is being able to provide him with opportunities to practice the things that he is learning at this specific point in time. By no means do I believe that the exercises that I am doing with him makes him do anything. A kid is going to crawl whether you actually put them in all fours and whether you help them strengthen all their different muscles and do all the exercises that you are wanting to do. It's not going to be a determinant whether your child crawls or not. And so therefore, I think there needs to be a layer of caution as well of understanding that whilst I'm enjoying doing these videos and there are certain things that we love doing with Alex and he seems to be responding quite well to this, this is not in any way, shape or form directive. Um, and as I said, I am not an expert. If for whatever reason you are concerned about anything or you are wanting to have information that can help you with your unique situation, please consult the relevant specialist to assist you in troubleshooting your specific case. I want to take some time to talk around my parenting philosophy. And that makes it really sound like I've put so much thought into this and then it is this really kind of cast in stone thesis or something that I've put out, which it really isn't. And whilst there is a lot of intention that goes into some of the practices that I follow, a lot of it is also, I have to admit, made up as we go along. <laughs> and as I find more information and resources, you know, things change and things that I felt that is completely non-negotiable becomes very negotiable as soon as you have a child. I sometimes wish that I had the confidence um, in my parenting skills that I had before I was a parent um, and I can remember conversations that I had with my sister-in-law and which I'm looking at now and thinking I was insufferable um, and I, <laughs> if only I could actually be as confident now as what I was then with regards to what children need. Um, meanwhile, I have to admit that I have never second-guessed myself quite as much as I have since becoming a parent. So based on all of this, I want to reiterate that I'm a mum, 
Um, I love to hear what other people are doing. So please subscribe to the channel, provide me with some comments and updates about activities that you are doing with your little one. Um, I'm also hoping to record items of specific interest. Um, so from that perspective, things like uh, traditional versus baby led weaning and um, our cloth diaper. Um, so looking at cloth diapers versus um, disposables, what works, what doesn't work. Um, some tutorials around some of the items which I find that cloth nut diaper specifically becomes super daunting to people. So being able to just talk through what it is that I do. I'm also planning on interviewing specialists because as I said, um, you know, a lot of things, especially things like breastfeeding, uh, weaning, all of these kind of topics really needs to be based on fact. And once you know what the facts are, I am a very strong believer that you need to choose something that fits within your lifestyle. I think too often we get forced into doing things because society uh, believes that things need to happen in a specific way and I think it makes our lives a lot more difficult than what it should be. I think it's hard enough being a parent and we should not be complicating things by trying to be something or fit a square peg into a round hole. Okay, So I think in a nutshell that probably summarizes my, as I refer to it, parenting philosophy. Um, there are certain things that I also subscribe to. Um, I try to be as child-led as possible. Um, so we don't follow specific schedules. Um, we, you know, he eats when he's hungry. Um, he sleeps when he's tired. Um, so we do not have a set routine. It seems to have kind of fallen into some broad strokes about what happens when. Um, but with the frequent growth spurts, and as I said, I believe in things like the uh, wonder weeks, the leaps that happen, a lot of that just gets thrown out the window and you just have to go with the flow. Um, that has been my philosophy and it has helped me to not be stressed out about things. And when I'm not stressed out, I do feel like I am able to empathize a lot more with what Alex is going through. And I am able to help him uh, to try and navigate these really big things that are happening in his life whilst I'm trying to figure it out myself as well. I really do hope that you will find a lot of value out of this series and please do make sure to subscribe and um, stay in contact and let me know what your thoughts are as well.